uh, to it all. Um, you surprised many with your first team announcement all those years ago. Uh, there might have been a few raised eyebrows with the, the captaincy here. Yeah, just, just if you could explain the reasoning of, of giving the nod to Ken Owens. Ah, first he's a great man. That um, and looking at the the squad, I think uh, if we're picking a team, uh, the way he played in the autumn, I know he's had come back from injury. I thought he was outstanding in the autumn, and you know he's probably the number one in that position at the moment. And there are a few other positions where people will, will be fighting uh, for this for this spot. Yeah, you know, he's going to be under some pressure as well, and hopefully there's everyone's in the same boat. Um, you know, did contemplate whether we picked a young captain and looked at that for the future. Um, but t talking to the other coaches, there's probably a few contenders in that sort of uh, post the World Cup, and you know, obviously there'll be quite a significant change in the squad post the World Cup. So, um, you know, Ken's been picked to do that job at the moment, and um, I think he'll do a great, great job. It's quite a story for Ken because he had uh, that um, season-long injury before New Zealand a year autumn contemplated perhaps at one point not coming back and as you mentioned there is a bit of depth in that position as well behind him. Yeah there is and that's uh, that's part of the challenge for us trying to create as much depth as possible sort of building into through the Six Nations and into into France for the World Cup um, and that's going to be a challenge for us but uh, you know I've got a huge amount of respect for him um, you know as a person and I think he'll be popular with the players uh, he wears his heart on his sleeve. He's got a, you know, outstanding rugby intellect, uh, and I think he you know, relates really well to people. Um, and I think he'd be a popular choice for, for the Welsh also. Four and cap players. If you break them into backs and forwards, the two backs, Mason Grady, Kieran Williams, a glimpse possibly of the future in that midfield, also with Joe Hawkins, uh, from the autumn campaign. Yeah, possibly. You know, I think uh, Mason's obviously. You know he's a big man in terms of that. He's got, um, you know, he's got some development to do, and um, he's been involved with the squad in the past. Even though he wasn't named in the squad, has been, has been, has trained with the team. Um, yeah, I've been impressed by a couple of performances that I've seen from him. I think there's definitely more to come. Uh, Karen's a bit different. Um, he reminds me of a, a younger Scott Gibbs in the way that he sort of plays and his stature and stuff. Uh, fantastic. Uh, footwork, getting across the gain line. Um, so he's a little bit different and it's pretty exciting, so it's a great opportunity for him. And and for the two forwards, uh, Reese has been involved with the squad as well. And then um, and for Teddy, um, yeah, it's just an opportunity for him to come in to see what he can he can bring to the squad. It's a position that we need to develop some, some, some depth in. Um, I think the challenge for us is how do I balance um, a number of older players that have been around for the last few years that have continued to carry on and been part of the squad and how many changes do you make, how many how many players that we do bring in because we need to give some of those youngsters some an opportunity during the Six Nations, the World Cup warm up games leading into into the World Cup. So there's it's a bit of a balancing act and it's kind of I hope that I think that's reflected in the squad that we've picked. We've picked some some experienced players that um, we want to still be part of it, but we've also got to give a, a lot of those players in the squad. If you look, they haven't got a lot of caps behind their names and they need to get some more experience. Uh, because if we've seen teams in the past that have uh, arrived at World Cups with older, older players or older squads and you pick up three or four injuries and all of a sudden you're throwing players in that haven't had a lot of experience. Uh, you know, that's kind of part of our thinking is it's, it's important that we want to do well in the Six Nations but we've got to think about the next 10 months as well. Given that, is the Six Nations a bit of a free shot for yourself and the squad given the troubles of the autumn and the World Cup as you mentioned, we've got to think about the next 10 months, is the bigger picture and the wider picture? Oh, there is a bigger picture to look at but this, the Six Nations are never a free shot, I mean it's, it's, it's important. Um, it's always been important for us and for for us the, the Six Nations is when points are at stake. I think the free shot sometimes in the autumn. Um, you don't get a free shot in the Six Nations because 
it's a competition you want to do well and it's a competition you want to win. Um, we had a tough game first up, but you know, Ireland at home first up, I think it's a, it's a great game for us and you know, sold out stadium, um, you know, something that we can look forward to and preparing for over the next few weeks, um, you know, getting Ireland first up, number one, number one in the world and it's going to be a great challenge for us. Just a final one uh, from myself. Fifteen years ago, you came in after Nantes in the World Cup. Four months later, or five months, Wales were winning the first game at Twickenham for 20 years. We all know what came afterwards. Um, not too dissimilar this time around. Is this a tougher proposition than when you came in all those years ago? Um, yeah, probably is it a, a little bit tougher in terms of you know, there were some of the regional teams that were doing well. We picked a lot of Ospreys players in that first game and that was, you know, that, that transition made it easier in terms of, uh, you know, going in that first game to, to twick them. So, yeah, it's, uh, you know, there's a lot of expectations on, on the national team and the challenge for all of us, I think, in Wales is that we want our regional teams to be competing on a, on a, and doing better in the competitions that they played in. It was great to see the four of them win on the weekend. It was fantastic. and doing reasonably well in Europe, but the URC is, is the competition they're involved in and we've got you know all our teams in the bottom half of the competition and three of them at the bottom of the competition. So that's, that for us, is, that for me, is a, is a big challenge because you know we go into a Six Nations and there's a huge amount of expectation and Wales expect us to do well and the, the Welsh public expect us to do well in that competition and we have you know fared extremely well over the last 20 odd years, you know, during that uh, Six Nations, um, when it was formed, went from the Five Nations. So, yeah, look, I'm I'm excited about it, but um, I'm well aware that you know, there are some 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 challenges ahead. Okay, so we'll come to Graham then for a couple of questions to end the live section. Warren, just to go back to the captaincy, um, you made Sam Walbert captain of 22. Did you consider? Doing something as radical this time rather than a yeah, I did. 36 year old? I did, yeah. What, what was the reason for, for not going that direction? The reason was um, because I uh, spoke about a couple of youngsters and, and, and doing that, and the reason was that there's probably uh, two or three players that would be in contention to do that role post cup, but there's possibly an older player that might be ahead of them at the moment or will be competing for them in that position. So, um, yeah, so we had a good good discussion and good debate about, you know, potentially who could be uh, a long-term captain of Wales sort of sort of post, post-World post Cup. And there, there's you know, some some interesting candidates for that and some, some strong contenders as well. You talked about that balance between young players, young blood coming in and keeping some of the more experienced players. Did you did you contemplate something more ruthless, getting rid of the, the guys in their mid-30s? Um, yeah, I did. And what, what, again, what was the thought process? The thought process is uh, that was something that needed to be done earlier. And I think we're running out of time, so you know, that some of that experience needs to be in that squad um, to help with, with some of those youngsters that are coming through, the players that haven't got a lot of caps to their names. So that was the thought process there. Could you tell us about uh, your decision to appoint Mike Forshaw and, and what do you think he's going to bring in this squad, whether you see a similarity there with your work with Sean Edwards? Um, you know, I don't know where... Someone made up a story about Paul Gusto. Like I've got to get that out there because I never had a conversation with him. I don't know that sort of. It was interesting uh, read for a few weeks that uh, he was nailed on. Um, Rob Howley. What's that? Rob Howley. What's that? Did you approach? Did you want Rob Howley perhaps to come in as well? Oh, I would have loved to have. You know, loved. I've got a lot of time for Rob. You know, a huge amount of respect and have worked closely with him. So, uh, with the foreshore thing. Um, uh, did a lot of homework on him. Uh, you know, he's probably got a very similar background to, to what Sean has in terms of his rugby league experience and playing for Wigan and Great Britain. Uh, he's pretty close to Andy Farrell. Uh, he he felt that 
the experience he'd had in rugby union, he wanted to challenge himself at the next level. Um, so spoke to a lot of people uh, who rated him extremely highly, not just as a rugby coach, but as a person. And that was pretty important to me, uh, getting the right people involved and someone who will come in here and uh, one, bring his experience, but also I think fit into trying to create a harmonious coaching group, which is going to, which is pretty important to me, well, very important to me, sort of, you know, going forward over the next few months. And as Kenneth just said to you, you know, 15 years ago, you came in, you hit the ground running, you won the Six Nations. Looking at what you've got in this group, looking at what the others have got, what Ireland have got, England, France, is it believable that you can do that again? Well, it wasn't believable 15 years ago, was it? So. Anything's possible. Uh, look, I'm incredibly competitive, uh, you know, and I'll do whatever it takes to get this the squad to a position where I believe they can compete with, you know, some of the top teams in the world. And that's going to take a little bit of time, and, and but I can guarantee you that we'll work incredibly hard over the, the next number of weeks, um, and and I'm positive that will compete extremely well in the Six Nations. Okay, so um, that's the end of the live section.